interpreting that we need is straight, the minimum and maximum values of any function are called the extreme values, or sometimes they will call them extrema. That's the plural of extreme uh, value. And the process of finding them is called optimization. Okay, we call it optimization. So sometimes we want to find the min or max on a particular interval um, rather than the entire domain. So um, that's just your technical definition. Okay, it's a minimum on an interval if the value at that uh, point is less than or equal to all the other values on that interval. Okay, that kind of makes sense. That's where the minimum is. It's less than all the other values. Maximum, vice versa. It's greater than all the other values. Okay. Not every function has a minimum or a maximum. For example, f of x equals x. If you don't contain that to an interval, f of x equals x doesn't have a maximum or min minimum because it never changes from increasing to decreasing. Okay? But even on an interval, sometimes we will not have extreme values. So let's look at that first picture right there. Okay? This is kind of, uh, it's called a piecewise function. It's Kind of looks like an absolute value. When you have a cell disclosed, the two sides are not the same. So this is some kind of a piecewise function. Um, and you'd be tempted to say that this point here at C3 would be the maximum, but notice that's a hole. Um, and there is no point right there. So this function has no maximum value on this interval. And here's the reason why. Because we can get infinitely close to this hole right here, so we can never pinpoint what that highest value is because as soon as we think of, you know, 2.999999, just stick another 9 on it and you have a closer number. Um, so this does not actually have a maximum. Now it does have a minimum. Okay, at A, that's a minimum value uh, on this interval. Okay, it does have a min. Uh, but it does not have a maximum. Now the one in the middle has neither a minimum nor a maximum. It has neither a minimum nor a maximum because first of all, it never changes from increasing to decreasing, so that takes away our uh, relative minimum or maximum. And if we look at the endpoints here at A, again, it has a hole, so we can get infinitely close to 10 here, but we can never pinpoint how close we get. And on the right side, B looks like a vertical asymptote, so that side of the function is going to continue to increase, so it has no maximum value there. Now, the last example is really what we're going to focus on uh, right now. Every continuous function on a closed interval from A to B has both a minimum and a maximum on that interval. Okay, if the function is continuous from A to B, then you will have both an absolute max and an absolute min. And I like that they use this picture because sometimes it's your endpoints, okay? This value over here at B is not what you consider a traditional maximum. Usually we're expecting a peak in the graph. Um, this does not produce that, but because we cut off our interval right here, this is the maximum value on this interval. That's the highest y value that we achieve on this interval. Now over here, at this peak, that is a relative max, okay, this is a relative max, but it's not the absolute maximum, this is the absolute maximum on this uh, interval, and this would be the absolute minimum as well on the interval. Now if this were not contained to an interval, it appears that this is like a cubic function. Uh, so to the left of A, this function would continue decreasing. So this absolute minimum that we have identified on this interval would then become a relative minimum because the function does achieve lower y values. But on this interval, this is the absolute minimum of this function on this interval. Okay? All right. So, we have something called the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem, and it's very handy that it's called the extreme value theorem because it is referring to the extreme values. 
but it also it helps me remember that I've got to consider the extreme ends of my interval. I've got to consider where I start and where I end, not just uh, where I hit maxes and mids. Uh, so this is what I just stated in that last problem, in that last example. If your function is continuous on a closed interval, it has to be a closed interval, okay? A and B must be both included, and this is why I'm nitpicky about parentheses versus brackets. Um, if the A and B did not have brackets, if they were open parentheses, then you would not consider the endpoints. Okay? So, if that's true, if it's continuous on a closed interval, then the function has both a maximum and a minimum on the interval. Okay? Illustrated by that last picture on the previous slide. Okay? Um, we talked about, remember we talked about the intermediate value theorem, which guarantees the existence of a point on uh, an interval. Okay, we call these existence theorems because they guarantee the existence of certain things, in this case a maximum or a minimum, but it doesn't tell you how to find them. You gotta use other mathematical processes to do that. All right, here's another definition. Local extrema, okay? You have local minimums at a value uh, where you change from decreasing to increasing, okay? Local extrema, local minimums are where you change from decreasing to increasing. Um, so this is technically a local minimum, but really the better way to describe this is an absolute minimum, okay? Because it is the absolute minimum value of the function. So I don't like that they call that a little minimum, that's why I marked it out for absolute. Yes, sir. Do you, do you like, if they had left it as a local minimum, do you say that, like, that was value from, like, 1 to 3, that would be considered the All right, so the first picture, we're looking at the same function, okay, in both these pictures. The first one does not have an interval. The second one does have an interval, okay? They uh, condense from A to B, okay? Um, so, the first one does not have an absolute maximum because we're not on an interval. Uh, both ends of the function are increasing, so we can't, we can't nail that down. Uh, so there's no absolute maximum on the original. But when we restrict this to a closed interval from A to B, then where they have placed A, that then becomes the absolute maximum value right here. Um, because if you look at the interval, okay, where it's normating these ends of the function, that's the highest y value that you will achieve. This is still a local maximum right here in the middle because it changes from increasing to decreasing. Um, and you still have a local minimum and an absolute minimum. So we can have multiples of all of these. Okay, I'm just trying to show you a bunch of different examples before we jump into it. Okay, so before we get too in depth, I just want to start with these ideas, identifying local versus absolute.